Hello, it is my pleasure to welcome you to my list of the best RTSs to watch out for in 2021. This is a continuation of a similar video I did last year, and I plan to make this an annual thing to be done around November at the end of each year. This year's list isn't looking quite as optimistic as the last one, but nevertheless there are some pretty sweet games to go through today. So we're not going to waste any time, let's get straight into it. And if any of these look good to you, there are of course links in the description for all of them. But before that, I'm happy to announce that we're officially a real YouTube channel, because I'd like to thank Frag Pro Shooter for sponsoring this video. One of the best mobile shooters of the year with a 4.5 star rating and the Editor's Choice Award on the Google Play Store. It has over 50 million registered players, with around 1 million logging on every day. There's a link in the description which will give you one golden chest, 500 coins and 50 diamonds, and the link will work for both new and existing players. In the game you'll collect characters and build a deck of 5 of them from a choice of over 80. There's new fraggers always being added, and there's also multiple modes, such as Payload, where each player must escort their cart to the middle of the map, and the first to reach it will be victorious. And it's up to you whether you want to take an offensive approach and slow your enemy's progress, or a defensive one to speed yours up. The game's free, and again there's a link in the description where you can access it and get exclusive rewards as viewers of my channel. And like I said earlier, thanks to Frag Pro Shooter for sponsoring this video. Alright, let's get into it. Straight in we've got Stronghold Warlords, and this is being released on January the 26th, so only a couple of months away. It was announced what seems like eons ago back in June of 2019, and it's the follow-up to 2013's Crusader 2, and it's going to be the newest entry in the castle building real-time strategy series that's been around since 2001. Saying Warlord's upcoming release represents quite a significant event for developer Firefly Studios would be an understatement. Since their original game in the series, Firefly have never really hit that same level of success with their subsequent releases, and that rings especially true in the series' 3D renditions which have ranged in quality from pretty good to pretty not so good. Firefly are hopeful that they can win the hearts and minds of the existing fanbase, as well as bring in new eyes to a series that's had its popularity slowly but surely wean over the past 10 or so years. I've been able to both talk with developers about and play pre-release versions of Warlords over the past wee while, and I'm optimistic that they can pull off something special here. They have already delayed the game's original release of September of this year to January, which shows their dedication to putting out a quality product. So while I'm not jumping to any conclusions, if you're an existing fan of the series or have never played a Stronghold game before and find the concept intriguing, then Stronghold Warlords is certainly a game you'll want to keep your eye on in the new year. You can also look out for my full review, which will hopefully be out either on or slightly before the game's official release. Now, Beyond All Reason is a game I think a lot of you will be interested in. It's actually out now in the form of an alpha build, and it's free, so you can download and play right this second. Beyond All Reason, or BAR for short, is inspired by Total Annihilation, and you can look at it as a close sibling to Planetary Annihilation, Supreme Commander, or even Zero K. When you look into it, BAR is kind of insane. There's nearly 400 separate units to play with spread across 10 classes, one of which being massive experimentals like what you might remember from Supreme Commander. A big part of VAR is its real-time simulation, which applies to units, ballistics, and terrain destruction. Now, I'm not entirely sure what that actually means for gameplay, perhaps someone in the comments can school me, but it sure sounds impressive. Speaking of terrain, it plays a large role in the gameplay, as it can be extensively remodeled throughout a match as it hosts thousands of units doing battle, perhaps with a nuke or two going off for good measure. Some units can even thrive on different types of terrain, like these spider dudes who can scale near vertical walls. For a lot of people, Bar is looking like a real spiritual successor to Total Annihilation, and while personally I'm more of a Supreme Commander guy myself, I can certainly see the draw. Despite that, Beyond All Reason is one of only a couple of games on this list you can actually play right now, today, and honestly that just might be all you need to give it a try. It is free after all, so it's not like you've got anything to lose. Manor Lords is a game that caught my eye the second I saw its trailer on YouTube. Incredibly, it's being made by a single developer, 
and they describe it as a medieval strategy game that combines deep, realistic city building with large-scale tactical battles. Based on the promotional material and description, the gameplay to me seems like a pretty interesting mix of games such as Stronghold, Age of Empires, and Total War, all of which I've played the heck out of in the past. And while I can't come to any conclusions before playing it, of course, I'm really excited to give this a go, and all going well, I can see Manilord scratching a similar itch to a little game called Banished that came out back in 2014. Funnily enough, also a solo effort. Give it a try if you haven't, it's very good. Manilords looks pretty incredible graphically as well, and it's a testament for what can be done by a solo developer nowadays. Release-wise, it's planned to enter Steam Early Access sometime soon, and I'd say it's very likely to get a first release sometime early into next year. Now, Warhammer 3 is not actually a game that has a release date. Heck, it hasn't even been announced at all. But based on previous years, I'd say it's very likely that Warhammer 3 is going to be Total War's 2021 entry. There has after all been a Total War game released every year since Attila. The Total Warhammer series has always been positioned as a trilogy, so it's no secret that a third game is in the works. Warhammer 2 has been out since 2017, so I'd say it's about time we'll start hearing about Warhammer 3 sometime in the next few months. DLC for the former seems to be slowing down too, and I'd say this latest one is probably the last we'll get, if I had to guess. And if that's the case, I'd say it's a pretty strong indicator that it's time to start ramping up a sequel's hype cycle. Personally, I love the Total Warhammer series, and I'm incredibly interested to see what they can do with the third game in the trilogy. Recently, I spent way too long reviewing Warhammer 2, and while I did shower it with praise, I still have some major reservations about the game's DLC system, so hopefully they can work out a way to make the third game more appealing to new players, and not force them to buy hundreds of dollars worth of DLC to catch up with those who have been around since the first game. Regardless, it'll be exciting to see what comes from Creative Assembly in the next wee while, and if I was a betting man, I'd say we will have heard about Warhammer 3 within the first six months of next year. Right, for you sci-fi RTS fans out there, this one might just be for you. Stellar Warfare is another game currently in development by a single person, and it's currently in closed alpha to anyone who backs the second or third tier of the game's Patreon. Its build is a real-time strategy featuring base building and a ship designer, so I'm getting some pretty big homeworld vibes from this one. I haven't played it yet personally, so I don't have a ton to say on it, but going by the videos that have been released so far, the game looks pretty impressive graphically, and to be fair, I'm always down for more space RTSs. It's been in development for nearly three years now, and from what I've gathered from developer updates and blog posts, it's mostly feature complete and is primarily in a stage of polishing, bug fixing, and optimizing. If you're interested, I'd recommend checking this one out. I've had a few interactions with the developer and they've come across very well and are obviously super dedicated to getting the game done and in a good state. Going off all that, I'd say it's likely we'll see a release sometime in 2021, and you can expect a video on it from me sometime in the future as well. The third and final game on this list from a single developer, the aptly named Viking City Builder, is a strategy game about Vikings that is both a city builder and an RTS. Who would have guessed, right? I don't really have a lot to say about this one as it's not available to play as of yet, and all I've seen of it is screenshots, trailers, and descriptions. But can I say, wow, if this game looks as good as its promotional material, I'll be impressed. The game features ray trace lighting, which is impressive in its own right, for both an RTS and a game developed by a single person, and some of these comparisons are pretty mind-blowing. This is one I'm personally really excited for, and I'll be keeping a close eye on its Steam page throughout next year. So this is a weird one. Unbeknownst to me, there was a new Settlers game announced in 2018. It got a trailer, and even a vague release date of sometime in 2019. It was then pushed to this year, until June came around and it was postponed indefinitely. They even cancelled and refunded everyone's pre-orders. So no one really knows what's happening with this one. There's a chance it'll be re-announced next year, but personally I think it's more likely that it's been shelved permanently, considering the circumstances. Still, I'd be happy to be proven wrong, but for now, the new Settlers game is unfortunately less of a win, and more of a if. As you're very likely aware, Age of Empires 4 was released quite a while ago, back in Gamescom of 2017, and has since received a couple of trailers, 
as well as some brief gameplay last year. We know it's been developed at Relic Entertainment, who are no stranger to developing quality RTS games, though recently that has been brought into question somewhat. Dawn of War 3, anyone? The rumour is Age of Empires 4 will be released in 2021, so it's unlikely we'll be able to play it anytime soon. But I do certainly hope they take their time with this one. When you're following up to one of the greatest RTS series of all time, you'd better make sure it blows everyone away. We'll almost certainly hear more about it next year, and probably get a bunch more actual information and gameplay throughout the year now that the entire Age of Empires trilogy has received their definitive edition releases. I can be hopeful, can't I? One game we likely won't hear much of in 2021 is Homeworld 3, which hasn't had anything more said about it since I talked about it in last year's top upcoming RTS's video. It's more just on the list to remind you that yes, it's still here and it's still in development, hopefully, but isn't slated for release until the end of 2022. Oh well, that gives me more time to make my reviews on Homeworld 1, 2, and Deserts of Karak at least. Hey, maybe if we're lucky, within a year's time we'll get some news on the game's development and I can add that to next year's version of this video. So yes, I understand many of you likely don't have high hopes for RTS in the coming years, but I hope this list has given you at least some optimism that yes, there are some promising strategy experiences on the horizon. And there's even more than what I've just mentioned. Based on the success of the first, I'd say it's possible that with any luck we'll get news of further remasters to the Command & Conquer series, and if we're really in dreamland, maybe a brand new entry entirely. Plus there's this series of tweets from Brad Wardell from Stardock and the Sins of a Soul Empire Twitter account, and you can read into these what you will. I know I am. Furthermore, we haven't even talked about the founding of Frost Giant Studios, a team of ex-Blizzard RTS veterans with credits on series like StarCraft and WarCraft. So there's some possibility we'll hear news about their upcoming projects as well. They have been very clear that they're keen to develop quality RTS games going forward. So from where I'm sitting, I think there's more than a few chances that we'll have some exceptional real-time strategy games upcoming and hopefully not too far off on the horizon. Thanks for watching and let me know what games you're looking forward to in the comments. Plus, I'm sure I've missed more than a few, so please let me know down below. I would love to hear about them. If you'd like to follow me for updates on the channel and future videos, then you can do so on Twitter. Also, I occasionally upload videos to my second channel, mostly my podcast with my good mate Ricky Summer, so check that out if you're interested. Links are in the description. And lastly, you've probably seen a very short credits list of people supporting me via YouTube memberships. Currently no Patreon, but I do plan to add it at some stage with the same tiers as what's available now through YouTube. So if you do want to support me directly, then right now that is the best way to do it. There's three different tiers, you can see them on screen here, all with different rewards, and I will be updating them soon. Hopefully we'll be restarting a Discord sometime in the future, so we'll see how it goes. But if you want to appear on the list for now, that's how you do it. Right, thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.